I've spent a lot of time editing an interview I did with Chris McKenzie down in Plettenberg Bay. Now, if you haven't listened to that interview, you might not know who Chris is. So just briefly to tell you about him, he's seven goals. He's been involved with the Merlos brothers from Argentina for many years. Uh, most of those brothers are 10 goals. He's played with them in all kinds of different competition from 22 goal down in England. He travels the world um, playing as a professional and as a very sought after professional. But when I was editing this interview that I did with him, there are some just amazing nuggets of information that you have to get hold of. So what I wanted to do was just to extract just a few of those absolute gems, just to prick your kind of fancy there and, and make sure that you actually get hold of the full interview because it is just the most amazing advice that you can get and I really want you to pay attention to it because it will make a real difference to your polo. So enjoy these few snippets but do get hold of the main interview and make sure you watch it again and again because as you watch it more and more will come out of it. Like any ball sport you want to take the ball in front of you you know uh, you see very I don't think there's any sport where you try and play the ball behind you and in particular when you're tapping you want to keep the ball in front of you for a few reasons first of all so you can have another swipe at the ball if you miss it but uh, mainly because if you get forward and you get low to the ball you can see the height of the ball the minute it's underneath you you can't see what height the ball is you know your eyes can't tell if the ball is that far off the ground that far off the ground or it's uh, it's sitting on the ground whereas when it's in front of you you can see the height of the ball and you can play the ball um, also you're probably avoiding the front legs of you having to go left and having to go right I mean if you're tapping the ball here you literally you can go straight or right you've got no left movement you know which is probably one of the more difficult things but it limits you a fair bit um, so you want to get down low um, a lot of weight in the legs are nice and firm uh, often beginners they get down to the ball they tap the ball and uh, this is a thing that I used to do so clearly it, um, you, you have to rebalance, you sit up again and you get back down to the ball, you, you rebalance and you get back down to the ball and it creates a lot of movement and you end up missing the ball. Um, you need to get firm in your saddle, slightly out of your saddle so the horse's movement isn't uh, putting you up and down and, and moving you around and you need to uh, yeah, get damn strong on your legs so that you can stay down at the ball and you can just watch the ball and not worry about what's happening with the horse and uh, then you can really see and follow the ball all the way. What I'm seeing so much though when you're doing that <clears throat> is your lower leg from the knee is really almost back and with the weight on the inside of your feet so that you're riding very strongly in this part of your body. And I see so many of, these, of the beginners and people that ride poorly and dribble poorly with that leg from the knee going straight down where the girth is instead of behind the girth back where it sets you up in front. Is that a fair comment? Okay, so when we talk about uh, those legs sort of on the inside, weight on the inside and uh, and pushing backwards, um, weight in the feet. I'll just show you a little bit of an example of what normally people do. Normally people sit as if they're sitting on a couch, which is fine as long as it's relaxed, but the minute you want to start working on your finer skills, you've got to get your sort of foundation right. And you've got to be balanced and strong on the horse. Um, and that comes from uh, this riding position. Instead of being on your butt, as you can see, you take a, you know, just to sort of a, a way to check yourself as if you take a line from your hip uh, to your shoulder to where your ankle is. You see how it is slightly in front of where that line of where my hip and, and shoulder is. Then you know the weight is on your ass. Your legs are taking no weight and it's all on your butt. That's fine for walking around, sitting around, having a jolly old time, but the minute you want to sort of sharpen up and get your uh, body position right to carry the ball, you have to bring your feet back, you have to get off your butt. You see now how I've brought my ankle back in line with my uh, shoulder and my hip. Now the weight is in my feet. Now I take the weight and I push onto the inside of my foot and give it a, almost an outwards backwards kick and that lets me get out of my saddle and get balanced nice and forward and be able to stay down and play the ball and get low and get back hit neck shots and things um, the slightly more complicated stuff the minute you are here you're doing everything broken everything's off balance you have to tap and you have to rebalance and tap and rebalance the minute you bring your feet underneath you and behind you and kick into the inside of those feet you can stay down at the ball as long as you want you keep putting pressure in the outside in the sort of in my left leg and keep the weight on the inside of those feet 
and you can play the ball wherever you want and stay low with the ball as opposed to having your feet forward having to play and come back up play and come back up see I'm broken I've got no strength through this middle part of my body it's all bent uh, practicing the stick and balling is, is super important um, for me if you stick and ball in straight lines you're wasting you know 100% of your practicing time you should be hitting backhands to yourself you should be near side off side all the shots you're bad at, you should be practicing them all day as opposed to sitting, you know, the typical thing is, and everyone's guilty of it, myself included, you go around hitting nice shots thinking, shit, that's a beauty. Yeah, that's another beauty, you know, as opposed to going and practicing what you're bad at and uh, getting those things right. I think you, it's a good thing to, it's a, it's a hard one because if you stick and ball your horses like you play them, you'll wreck your horses. So uh, you've got to have, you know, in the back of your mind, you can't go every day stick and ball, stop and go, stop and go. Yeah, by the end they're going to be buggered, you know what I mean? But if you go out there, and if, I think of it a bit like maintenance, you know, and it's it's a hard thing for beginners, but uh, when you stick and ball them, you've got to get them going correct and easy and soft and light in the mouth, and then on the field they'll do that, etc. And they'll do that for 10 years as opposed to for three, and eventually get a bit jumpy and a bit sore and a bit tired because you keep flogging them or, or riding them badly or practicing the wrong things. Um, but yeah, you have to practice and stick and ball like you're going to play, but I think just without the, instead of the jamming stop, you just bring them in tidy, get them stopping on their back legs, and then you move off from there, as opposed to <coughs> like you would have to on a field, you know, you know and uh, and just get them to respond off the legs and things. Yeah, I think when you're stick and balling, obviously you're, yourself, you practice, and then the horses, you just want them nice and light on their feet and light in the mouth and never pulling you. You want them nice and loose reined, and if you can, uh, very hard to get right, but if you can get that transition of playing them nice and they're ready and fast and strong and uh, to then stick and balling them on a loose rein then you, you know, you're obviously doing it right. Um, but yeah it's quite a hard thing uh, especially with so, sort of normal calm horses your best horse generally you don't have to worry about it you jump on them and off they go quiet and easy but the ones that are a little bit on the edge and you're having to just take it uh, you know just manage them slightly uh, it's a funny thing with uh, horses that are into push animals. You know, if you stand in the stable and push the horse, generally it pushes back. Um, and it's the same with the mouth. If you hold the horse, you think, okay, the horse is just going to end up reversing. But what they end up doing is running stronger and stronger and stronger into the bridle. So you've just got to be very careful with your hands in those first few minutes. Uh, work them to the sides and don't spend time holding them, you know, and it's quite within how do you stop them from running it's a, it's a bit of a feel you get of taking and releasing taking and releasing getting them to just drop their head and relax and then like you say once they are nice and calm you can do whatever you want with them you know you give them a good workout you drop the reins for a bit in the last minute and uh, you can maintain those horses quietly sort of throughout their career as opposed to eventually as 12 year olds they're freaking taking you around the stick and ball field which happens to a lot of people and happens to good riders as well some horses naturally do that but the better you get, you should have less and less horses doing that. You should be able to keep them nice and I think uh, for <coughs> starters, you've got to be a bit fussy at the beginning with the horses. You've got to understand that at whatever level you are, you have to have the horse that suits you. You want them nice and relaxed in whatever situation. Um, the minute they're pulling you, you've sort of lost the battle. You know, you're not playing polo anymore. You're having to just fight and uh, you, you sort of lose the fun. So as a beginner, Get horses that are for beginners, uh, nice and relaxed, and if you leave them for a week or if you don't ride them for two, three months, they're still going to be nice and relaxed. There's so many people taking the ball forwards one tap. You know, forwards one tap helps you nothing. At first, you have a chance to miss the ball. Second, you give the guys time to get close to you. Um, if you've got space with, you know, with the new rules, you can't turn the ball anyway if you don't, if you, you know, if you've got no space, you've got to hit the back end. So if you're turning a ball, it's because you have space. The more speed you put into it, slightly longer taps. And always give yourself a change of direction. A straight tap is a useless tap. Always change the direction of where you're going. Very few times, even going to gold, you tap the ball dead straight. You want to give yourself directional change, you can move on to it. Keep the ball ahead of you. Nice, firm taps. This at a canter looks like a long tap at a gallop. It's not From there, it's a simple distribution, dead easy. You want to get more complicated, you're just complicating your own life. It's a simple sport. We make it a bit more complicated with the extra touches of the ball.